come on. Men and, and daughters and sons, stand up and celebrate your mother. Go find a mother and just tell them that you love them. Give them a hug this morning. This is their day. Let's go find a mother and just show them some love this morning. To me, sing that to your mom. You are so beautiful to me. Can't you see you're everything that I hope for? You're every, every, everything that I need. You are. celebrate our mothers on this morning we thank God for each and every mother that's here we're going to talk about this topic thank God for the mother with the oil thank God for the mother with the oil uh, first Kings the 17th chapter it's already up there verses 8 through 15 and it reads and the Lord came unto him saying Arise, get thee into Zarephath, Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Verse number 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Verse number 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Verse number 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Verse number 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake First, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Verse number 15, we'll conclude our reading from that text. Verse number 15, if it's not up there, I probably didn't put it up there, did I? Okay, that's why I opened my Bible. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. All right, let's go to 2 Kings. Is that up there? 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 7. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor came to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. I want you to see before you go on, we dealt in the uh, first chapter with Elijah, J, right? Now we're dealing with Elisha. Don't get them confused. But even though we're dealing with two different individuals, two different people, we are still dealing with, with the same message. And I'm gonna show you, Elisha and Elijah dealt with the same message with a widow woman with oil. Someone say, thank God, thank God for the mother, for the mother with, the with the oil. Go on to verse number two, please. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, thy handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Someone say oil. oil. Verse number three. 
Then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad and all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Verse number four. And when thou art come in the house, or, or when thou art come in, is, is that me? Yeah. All right, we're going to. Okay. And when thou hast come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all the vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Let's go to verse number five and finish out with six and seven. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Someone say pour out. Verse number six, please. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not another vessel more, and the oil stained. Verse number seven. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell what? The oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. Father, we thank you for this word we're about to receive. We thank you for this mother, Mother's Day message in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give honor to my mom. I didn't do that. Let's celebrate my mommy. Everybody give my mommy a hand. And of course, my wife, my kid's mother, is at basketball. <laughs> you know. So Brandon decided to go with her on today since it was Mother's Day. But we thank God for all the mothers. I want to say thank God for the mother with the oil. Thank God for the mothers with the oil. When I looked up the word mother in the dictionary, it said this. It is a woman in relationship with her child or children. It is a woman in relationship with her child or children. Then it goes on to say this. It is uh, from the Latin word mater familis, mater familis, which mater meaning mother, and familiti and familis mean family. So she is the mother of the family. Then it goes on to say she is a matriarch. Someone say matriarch. Matriarch is defined as a woman who is the head of the family. That makes no sense, does it? It makes no sense, uh, evangelists, that a woman would be the head of the family when the divine order of the Bible says that there is God, there is man, and then there is woman. Uh-oh. So how can the mother be the leader of the family? How many of you men in here are married? Just raise your hand if you're married. How many of you can really do something without first checking with your wife? I, I look and I see every hand and I'm telling you, it ain't true. It is not true. Yeah, Bishop says he can. I know that marriage. I know better than that. My, I, we used to make fun of my grandfather when I was a kid. We would say, Paul, Paul, do you want a sandwich? No, I don't want no sandwich. My mom, do you want a sandwich? Yeah, I, I want a sandwich. And my grandfather said, like, yeah, I think I'll have a sandwich too. So whatever my grandmother did, my grandfather thought it was okay. So even though men are the spiritual leaders of the house, which you should be, the real leaders and the fundamental foundation of the family, without a shadow of a doubt, is the mother. Oh, they got quiet. Ladies, celebrate that. You're the foundation of the family. Now watch this, the Bible did not say, or the dictionary did not say it was a woman who gave birth to a child, but it said it was a woman who was in relationship with a child, her child, or her children. Just because you birth somebody does not make you a mother. Because there's many mothers out here that didn't give birth to the children that they are raising, and there are more mothers than most mothers that we know. Because the mother is the matriarch of the family. The mother, the mother, the father is what's out front. He is seen. He is the masculinity of the family. It's supposed to be, I hope you are. He's the masculinity of the family. He's the one that has the broad shoulders and the big chest. He's strong and he's the protector of the family. But the matriarch of the family is a praying mother. Someone say a praying mother. Is there anybody in here that's ever had a praying mother that prayed for you? 
So the matriarch of the family is a mother that is prayerful, seeking God's face for the children. I can remember my father when he was out in the, I don't remember when he was out in the streets, but he said when he was out in the streets, he could come home at two, three, and four o'clock in the morning and he could hear my grandmother saying, please save my son Melvin before he gets into any more trouble. Why? Because a mother knows their children. A mother knows what their children are about. They can tell you if you're going through something. I hate it when I go into my mom's house. What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with you. Don't lie to me. I'm your mother and I know. That is the matriarch of a family. Now my father don't always do that. He can think everything's cool. And we have a real good relationship. But my mother knows when something is wrong. And when I need something, I don't go to my father. I go to my mother. If I go to my father, what do you think he says, Jamar? Oh, let me ask your mother. Because the mother is the glue and the foundation that holds the family together. Not the men, we are the spiritual leaders. We are the protectors and the providers. But when it comes to the matriarch of the family, that person that makes the family a functioning unit, it is the mother. Just celebrate your mothers. Whether they're here or not, just celebrate the legacy that they've left for you. And so, a mother has an intuition. They are able to pick up on things that the men are not able to, you're not going to shout on this message. This, this is not a shouting time. I'm not going to inspire you this morning. I'm going to celebrate our mothers. Is that all right? All right, amen. A mother is the matriarch of the family. Yes, they have a certain understanding of their children. I can remember a mother will do anything they can for their children. Now me, I love my boys to death, to life. I love them. I would do anything for them. But being the father, what I understand is that my job is to teach them how to be men. So I try to make them fend for themselves sometimes. Not my wife. Boys, take out the trash. I'm in the middle of a game. I will take that game and throw it out the window. Well, Tara, I'll get it. No, I asked, I told them to get it. Then that argument starts and I lose. But anyhow, the mother will do anything for their children. I can remember when I was a young trooper, I was 21 years old, I had moved to Wilmington. I had gotten sick. I wasn't deathly sick, but I wasn't feeling very well. First time being away from home that I really got sick. I had a bad cold, but I got off work. I talked to my mother earlier that morning, and she did not tell me this. I went ahead and went to church, the church I went to up there in Wilmington. I went to church, this was before cell phone stem, so when I came back from church, there was a note on my door from my mother who drove from Chillicothe to Wilmington, which is over an hour, just to see about her baby boy. And the note said, this is your mother. I was here to check on you. I love you. So I called my mother. I said, Mom, I didn't know you were coming. I'm 21. I got my own crib. You can't just pop up like that anymore. <laughs> but she came, and she, she said, well, I just came to check on you. I said, I'm all right. I went to church. Almost two hours later, I hear a knock at my door. She done drove all the way back to Chillicothe, came all the way back to Wilmington to fix me some soup and sit there while I went to sleep to make sure her 21-year-old baby was doing okay. That's what a mother will do. A mother will go the extra mile for you. Just touch somebody and say, I thank God for the mothers with the oil. I can remember another story. I don't know if my mom remembers this, but my first resisting, my first fight as a police officer, it happened about 1.14 in the morning. I remember it very clearly, Tim. I was arresting an older guy for drinking and driving. He had a son who was a Marine, just got out of the Marine Corps boot camp. Pretty stout young man. But I had just got out of the patrol academy, Brady. You know how stout we were then. I was young, I was in shape, I was energized. I wasn't looking for a fight, but I wasn't going to run from one then. I was, I was a stud, I was ready to handle that. So I ended up getting in a fight with the guy after I arrested his dad. You know, I won. He went to jail. I put the handcuffs on him. 114. When I got home, my phone rang. I don't know if my mother remembers this. And she said, what's wrong? I said, nothing's wrong. Something's wrong. I said, Mom, what are you talking about? I woke up at 114. I looked at the clock. And something in my spirit said, get on your knees and pray for your son. I thank God 
for a mother with the oil to see God's face. Now, how does that happen? Because a mother who loves her children knows when something's wrong. She was almost two hours away. I didn't tell her anything happened, but she woke up because the Spirit of the Lord woke her up and said, pray, something's not right. Celebrate your mothers on this morning. So the mother is the matriarch of the family. Now that's the formal definition of a mother. The informal definition of a mother. You're like this. She's a counselor. She's a provider. She's a protector. She's your lawyer when you get in trouble. Any of you ever been in trouble, don't raise your hand. Your mom will be there. She's your personal banker when you need a loan. I know if it, if it wasn't for my parents, I would have lost a lot of things. But because my mother said, I'm not going to let you do it, she was my personal banker. I know my father went out and worked, but, it, but no. My mother's the one that said, yes, you can give it to him. Not him. She said you can give it to him. She's not only my personal banker, she's your very best friend. She will go the extra mile for you. She will lay down her life for you. She wants her children to outlive her. A mother is the matriarch of who we are. If it was not for our mothers loving us and nurturing us, we would not be here today. Whether your mother has went on or whether your mother is still here, you need to thank God that your mother loved you enough. When society turned their back on you, the, the, the police said you were a miss, you were a lost cause. The government said there's no use for you. Your mama was still in your corner, praying for you, loving you in spite of you being a knucklehead. That's what your mama does. That's what your mother does. Your mother will never let you fail. Your mother will never let you fail. I remember when I was a young boy, I got in a fight. You punch, suck, punch me in my eye, Jamar. I said, young boy. You wouldn't get that off when I was an older boy. I seen it. All the Mark and Carl used to fight every weekend. You remember that? Me and Jamar be sitting up there at the bar. Yeah, we weren't always safe. Mark and Carl start fighting. Jamar look at me and be like, man, get your brother. I'll get mine. And we go breaking up. Me and Jamar were best friends in high school. And here's Carl and Jamar fighting. Until one day, Mama. Mama Betty come out. Carl and Mark were toe to toe. She'd slap Mark on the shoulder. Mark turned around, boom, right in his eye. You better leave my son alone. Mark looked. I looked. Jamar looked. Carl was like, Mom, what are you doing? Because a mother, there's no way she could whoop Mark. That's what she's going to try. Because that was her son. Thank God for being saved. Miss Betty, saved now. Mark, saved now. <laughs> She gonna get me for that one. But that was her child! Man. Because a mother does the mother's that. gonna protect you at every cost that she can. Amen. So we thank God for the mothers. I thank God for my mother for how she prayed for me. I thank God for my mother, Sister Evangelist Moody, because when I wasn't always doing what I should do, my mother was always in my corner. Some folk may have talked about me, some folk may have talked about what I did, but my mother was always in my corner. No matter what I did, my mama always, Jamar, your mom's always got your back. When you were out there doing no good, your mama still loved you, still cared for you. Thank God for a praying mother. My wife's grandmother, you better not mess with David. Marty would handle her business because that's what a mother did. Because that's what a mother does. She's always there for you. And so now we come to the conclusion of what we're talking about in Mother's Day. Is a mother with oil. We find that the story in 1 Kings, Elijah had a prophecy from God to go into the city of Zarephath and find a widow woman who was suffering. I ask the question this, why was it that particular widow woman that the Spirit of God sent Elijah to? Because this was a time when famine was running, running rapid in the land. 
And when famine, famine Travis was running in the land, she was not the only widow. There were widows everywhere who had children. Why did the Spirit of God tell Elijah to go to that particular woman instead of the other woman or the other women who were widows and who had children? The reason why is because she had something in her house that other women did not have. And what that was, Miss Betty, was oil. Even in 2 Kings, when Elisha had the prophecy to go, and he asked the young lady, what can I do for you? She said, the debtors have come to collect. My husband, who is now dead, could not pay the, the debt that we owe, so what they're going to do is if I can't come up with the money, they're going to take my sons and make them slaves because we can't pay. Amen. Elijah said, what do you have in the house? She said, I have nothing but a small pot of oil. Uh, I'm telling somebody something today. What is so important about the oil? The oil represents the anointing of Christ. Watch this. The oil was used for a whole bunch of stuff. Oil was used to cook with. Oils was used to bake with. Oils was used to light. Oil was used as an ointment. Oil was used to, 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 to fix things. Oil was used to celebrate. Oil was used to preserve meat. There was not many things that was that did oil didn't have the cause for. That's why it is so important that when you you become to know God you understand what the anointed power of God can do and so Carrie when he said what's in your house I don't have anything Go with me here real slow I don't have anything but a pot of oil I don't have any money all I got is a pot of oil I don't have the finest car to drive, but all I got is a pot of oil. My kids may be doing everything they're big enough to do, and I don't have the answer, Sister Garns, but I do have a pot of oil. And I've come to tell you that when, real soft, real slow, when you've got a pot of oil, that's all you need because the anointing is enough for God to work. That's why I thank God for the mothers that have the oil of God upon them. Put your hands together and celebrate a mother with the oil. So I close this morning telling you that if your mama had the oil, Sister Garns could have thrown in the towel a long time ago, losing her son, children going here and there, but she still loved them enough. She may not have had a lot of money, but she had the oil. She may not have to drove the finest car, but she had the oil. She may not have lived in the finest house, but she had the oil. I thank God that I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but my mother had the oil. When I was sick and defeated, she had enough courtesy to lay hands on me and transfer the anointing of the oil that was from her to me. Thank God for the mothers with the oil. Come on, put your hands together and celebrate Jesus this morning. The oil. Thank God. And again, the definition of a mother does not say the one who birthed you. It's the one who is the, in relationship with you. Just because you didn't birth that child, you are taking that child you're leading that child and you're praying for that child and you've got a matriarchal uh, relationship with that child. Uh -huh. You've done what you're supposed to do. So I thank God for the mothers of the glorious church Amen. who have the oil. I celebrate. I celebrate Mother Sanders here this morning. 
who had the oil enough to pray for us when we were younger. I celebrate Mother Mary in this morning who sometimes their older ways make us scratch our head and say, why do they believe like that? But it was the oil of God upon them that even though they made our dresses come down to our legs, they made us take this off and take that off and we were like, we don't understand this. It was still the oil that rolled off of them. I thank God for Mother Ping for how she does and testifies and prays for us. I thank God for Mother Cooper for how she has the oil. Come on, let's celebrate our church mothers this morning for having the oil. I thank God for Mother Morphmer for how she had the oil enough to pray for you, call you when you miss church. That is the oil of the Lord. Celebrate our mothers with the oil. A little boy came up to his mother in the kitchen. Play with me, Tim. One evening while she was fixing supper and handed her a piece of paper. He had been writing on the piece of paper and after he'd given it to his mother who was washing the dishes, she dried her hands on her apron and she read it and said, the little boy wrote, for cutting the grass, $5. For cleaning up my room this week, $1. For going to the store for you, 50 cents. For babysitting my little brother while you were going shopping, 25 cents. For taking out the trash, $1. For getting a good report card, $5. For cleaning up and raking the yard, two dollars mom after everything i've done for you you owe me fourteen dollars and 75 cents here's a mother with the oil the mother said for the nine months i carried you growing inside me no charge for all the nights i've set up with you doctoring and praying for you no charge for all the trying times and all of the tears that you caused through the years, no charge. For all of the nights that were filled with dread and for the worries I knew were ahead, no charge. For the toys and the food, no charge. And when you add it all up, the real cost of a mother's love is no charge. Can we celebrate our mothers this morning? Can we celebrate them that they took enough time to pray for you, to transfer the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon your life, to tell you that it's all right, you're going to make it? Come on, stand up on your feet and celebrate your mother. Celebrate the mothers of this church. We love our mothers. And there's no charge for what our mothers have done. No charge. 